Welcome back. Game four, AlphaGo versus the world. Chris Garlock mm -hmm. here with Michael Redman, our brand new series. We're looking at all 60 games when uh, AlphaGo burst upon the world in early 2017. Mm -hmm. Michael, who is our, who's our victim today? Okay, our human player is Che Erhau. I think I, that's pretty close to the pronunciation. He's a Fordon at the time, and he was in, born in Hubei, China in 1998, so he's still a very young player. But actually, we started to come up with some very prominent players now because um, in 2018, he became a world champion, uh, winning the oh, LT. Wow. Uh, he beat Iyama to be the world champion then. And that win promoted him to Naindan. And even at the time of this game in 2016, he was already um, quickly adopting the ideas that AG AlphaGo showed in the games against Lee Sedal. And he's a fast paced player. So he, um, he, he makes the attachment, he ma was already making the attachments against the Knights Shimaris and playing a fast paced opening. So he was catching on quickly and he was already a very prominent player. So I, I think at this point, I'm imagining that there's a large number of Chinese players at least um, sort of watching the games being played and sort of waiting their turn to jump in as soon as the game is over so they can play the next game. So we have a list, <laughs> a waiting list of players watching the games already probably. And they're kind of like, all right, kids, you know, you you had your shot. Let me let me at them. Let me <laughs> let me show you how it's done. All right, excellent. Let, I can't wait. Let's take a look at this uh, at this game. Go go for it. Okay, in this game, Shay has black, um, and he's playing three four points still. And up to this point, this is um, perfectly natural. It, it, it's still getting good scores with the computer. This is a point where a computer program would be playing something like, this is where the human played. Um, computer programs don't really like to play this move towards the side. It's a very common move for a human. It's an intuitive move for a human player to play. It still can be played by human pros, but you see either playing an attachment against the corner or a big shimari like this. Big shimaris are very popular now. So this is uh -huh. the new way to do it that, um, to be honest, people just didn't, didn't know um, and thought this was the most normal move. But playing right. a big Samari, um, it wasn't played very much until AlphaGo came around, and then it became very popular. popular. Mm -hmm. Mainly because uh, this version of AlphaGo was very successful with the big Samaris. So White plays in a, a Karkari against the upper left corner. And this is a position where the human players would always play a pincer. Like, sure. that's about 100% at that time. And the AIs, well, even in this position where black has a stone on the left side, the AI still wants to play an attachment underneath. And then black can play a pincer. And so this is uh, where the game has changed a lot after AIs, and, and people have been picking up on this. Like, black has mm -hmm. options to uh, attack white on a large scale here. But, you know, the, having a stone here, uh, this is the Kobayashi opening type of opening where the whole idea behind this opening was to play here and hopefully to attack white in the, in the area. So Absolutely. this was something that just did not occur to us. It was not part of the human repertoire, basically. So I can forgive him for not finding that move. And then white plays this. This is actually something, a kind of an aberration. It was something that AlphaGo did in this series and maybe in this, this one game, just a few games, it played this move. But in general, I think it would. Um, it's more likely that AlphaGo was choosing in later versions. It was choosing mm -hmm. an attachment against the three-three point, just making a quick an attachment against the three-three point to to make a quick base on the side. So something like this uh, might happen. Just living immediately, um, settling that group is what AlphaGo would probably do later in its evolution. In this game, it played here, and we got into this variation. This is not so bad for Black. Um, I think Black should have probably filled the liberty here, and we would have gotten into this variation. Um, probably giving a little bit too much detail here. Um, something like this, as far as I can tell. Okay. Um, this is kinda... close to even at this point. Okay. But when Black plays here and pulls back and ends up playing two stones, um, uh, playing the bamboo joint here to protect the left side, and White gets the initiative to play this Kakari in the upper right, at this point, already the game is starting to look good for white. It's 44% uh, winning percentage for black, which is actually not so bad, uh, <laughs> but it is a slight advantage for white. But it's only, what, 20, 
I can't see the numbers, but I mean, this is very early in the game. It's it's move number twenty four. This is yeah, actually this, um, um, so Shea actually did a lot better than most of the players. Yeah, passing twenty four moves. Yeah, and actually the highlight of this game is when White presses here, and this was an absolutely new variation uh, when White plays covering on the third line here, which was considered to be an overplay until Alpha uh -huh. Go played with great success. So this is the really? first time that I know of that AlphaGo showed this move. And it's going to be very successful. Pre previous to this game, it had been played by some human players. And it was generally considered to be a, an overplay for white, an unreasonable move. Interesting. Uh, black plays here. And white plays an Atari and then jumps. So, so far, this is according to plan. And the game move was that black curled around here. And after this move, um, I'm sorry to say, it quickly went uh, downhill for Black. Wow. So it turns out wow. that um, after this game, this game actually spurred a lot of research among professional circles. It was found that this was better, and this agrees with what the computer programs will, will tell you now. Black should push in this direction. Um, and actually, there's a lot of variations that can be considered valid. But basically, instead of curling around here, Black has to be pushing, if Black's going to play anything locally, Black has to be pushing in this direction. So this is an, an example of what might happen. And it gets very, very complicated. Um, Black is alive in the corner with a kind of a carpenter's, carpenter's square type of shape. So that's complicated uh -huh. too. But that's, that's a, a alive enough. And the, it, the fight is going to spread out. Like White's going to do something like this. For instance, something like this could happen and White moves out in the center. It's going to um, be a very difficult fight in the center of the board. Yeah. But it is close to even. Um, even though White has taken a small advantage um, in the position in the upper right, upper left, I mean, and White got the initiative there, it is a small advantage for, for White, but it was still a difficult game. In this position where Black is curled around in the wrong direction, it's at this point where Black could have captured White's stones on the right, but white would just take a position on, on the upper side. And this is good for white. Mm. Like white, white has a better position. Um, and so this is a, a variation I generated with um, Leela, um, where white actually, this, this move at six is functioning as a kind of a ladder break for white to play here and make trouble on the left side. And white does have um, a lot more momentum than black. White has an, a positional advantage. Wow. Just to go back to the game for a bit, uh, white, Black answered on this side. So it's com instead of playing here, it's perfectly reasonable for Black to hang in there in, on the upper side. But White does get to play both sides here. And at this point, like White has a decisive winning percentage. Like it's something like 75% winning percentage for White. So as far as AlphaGo is concerned, the game is over now. And just so folks have an understanding, basically because white is white has got a position on both sides there. Black has got a big fat target, mm -hmm. um, and and, and like white the has... corner, although it's alive, it's not the completely happy shape with that carpenter square. Sure, it's sure. It's not very much territory. It could turn into a co in some cases. Wow. So so very interesting. So it's it, you know and and it in in some ways kudos to uh, Chief for I mean this was. He's a, already, as you said at the beginning, a top player, mm -hmm. uh, and and you know sort of knew what he was getting into. Uh, hung in there for a couple dozen moves, and then one one sort of slip there, and well, yeah, like it it might look like it's just the opening, but he did last longer than most players in this whole series. All right, folks. Uh, well, we'll we'll have uh, more commentary in uh, volume two of Alpha Go to Zero. Uh, coming your way uh, very soon, we hope. In the meantime, hope you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.